Welcome back to this video. This video will see class A FLSM. We saw class B in the last video. Hope you understood the concept. So we are going to use the same requirement 1000 host for airport terminal. Our network ID is 10.0.0.0 slash 8. So I'm going to stop there. Now we have slash 8. So what is this slash 8? Whenever you see this slash 8, what does it mean to you? So we'll find out. This slash 8 here. I'm talking. So what does it mean, right? So we know that this is class A. How we know this is class A? Because of this first octet. And in first octet we have 10. So we know that from 1 to 127 is class A. It's class A, right? 128 to 191 is B and 192 to 223 C and there are more but these are the main ones that we need to be aware of so 10 obviously is between 1 and 127 and is class A right that much we know but what is this slash 8 so if you watch the last video, this slash value is nothing but it represents the network bits of the IP addresses. So let's see 10.0.0.0, right? So we have eight ones here, right? Five, six, seven, eight. So we have slashed eight. That means this is it. The first octet, eight bits. This is the network portion here. That means the rest of these are host portion. So we have eight zeros under here, eight zeros under this zero, eight zeros under this zero. So total 24 zeros are here. So we can borrow up to 24 bits. So this is only the first octet and we are done with the network bits. This is why this is slash eight. We have eight bits. And this is slash 8, that means the first octet is the network portion of this class A. And this is the default slash value of class A, slash 8. Now we'll look at this table. 1000 hose, right? 1000 hose means we need to go with 1024 minus 2 still will give us 1022. We really need 1001 because for the interface router address also we need one IP address. But even then we are getting plenty, right? So we can easily go with this 2 to the 10. So if you watch the last video, what does this 10 means? This means we are keeping 10 bits from the host portion and we start from the right. So from the last octet we start. So we have eight zeros here. And then we have eight zeros under here but out of those eight zeros we are only keeping two zeros the rest six of them we are converting to network bits which means the rest six here right the rest six here and the eight in the second octet so this eight plus six is fourteen right so 14 bits we are converting to network bits, right? So what is this value of the last bit converted? So this is one, this is two, and this is four, right? This is the value of the last bit converted. And notice that we have already done with the second octet. Now we, the borrow is happening on the third octet and we are ending here. And the last bit converted value is four. That means the block size, we have just found out the block size is four right so 4 is our block size but we cannot use the entire 4 minus 1 equals 3 so we increment really by 3 so our network ID is going to be 10 0, 0, 0, obviously the same one and then this is where the increment is happening on the third octet why because second octet we have taken all 8 bits and the third octet is where we are ending our conversion and we are ending here we still have two zeros but the last bit is happening on the third octet, which means the increment needs to happen on the 
third octet 10 0 3.255 now what's the slash value this much is 8 right that's our default this much is 8 again 8 slash 16 and then 17 18 19 20 21 22 this new slash value is going to be slash 22 right one more time 8 here which is the default right this 8 bits then again the second octet we borrowed all 8 bits that makes it 16 then again we borrowed 6 more that makes it 22 16 plus 6 slash 22 this is how we got the new slash value slash 22 so that means we need to add from here to this bit so if you add all of them together what you will get 128 plus 64 plus 32 plus 16 plus 8 plus 4 what is that 252 252 so that means our subnet mask in written format is going to be 255 right this 255 and also we have taken all 8 bits here that means another 255 now the third octet third octet we didn't convert all 8 bits we only converted 6 bits and if you add the value for those 6 bits we will get 252 and the last octet we still have all 8 zeros so simply put 0 got it so now 255.255.252.0 so our network id is 10.0.0.0 .0 .0 .0. Our new slash value is slash 22. Broadcast ID is 10.0.3.255 because our block size is 4. So 1 minus 3. And it's happening on the third octet because the last bit borrowed is in the third octet. Usable IP 10.0.0. Sorry, 10.0.0.1. 10 right in between all the way until 10.0. 0.3.254 255 is our broadcast id so 1 minus 254 subnet mask 255.255.252.0 so one more thing i can show you how many subnets will get right so how many subnets so the formula for how many subnets we get is it's simply 2 to the n n is for network bits converted network bits how many bits we have converted so 8 plus 6 14 so 2 to the 14 equals this one 16384 subnets we are getting this much subnet we are getting but in this range in this first subnet itself we are getting 1024 minus 2 1022 because one will go for network ID, one will go for broadcast ID, but we'll still get 1022 within this one subnet. So, what is our network ID? 10.0.0.0.22, broadcast ID 10.0.3.25. So, within this, we are getting 1022 valid IP addresses. So, we can satisfy this requirement within this one subnet. We can still use all these other subnets for different different requirements. So we are not wasting any IP addresses because those can be different different IP addresses given for different different requirements, different different departments or whatever we want to do with that. It doesn't have to be in the same airport terminal or anything like that. So within this one subnet we are satisfying this 10,000 uh, host requirement. So that's it. Now we'll see this in the packet tracer. Okay, now let's see this in practical. So we have the suppose we have the thousand host here. In the real world, you know, these thousand hosts is not going to connect it to one switch. There is not enough ports, right? Uh, so there will be like you know 10 to 15 switches that may be used for these thousand hosts, depending upon the ports. But this is just an example. We are assuming that you know uh, these hosts are connected to this switch just to show you the lab uh, but just keep in mind uh, these thousand hosts 
won't be able to connect to just one switch, right? So this port G000 would be the default gateway for these hosts. So that's where we need to go. So our network ID is 10.0.0.0. So the first available would be 10.0.0.1. That's what we are going to provide it here. The rest will provide from DHCP. So we'll configure DHCP also. So let's go here. Global configuration interface G00, zero no shut IP address 10.0.0.1.255.255.252.0 exit IP DHCP pool uh, airport terminal C network 10.0.0.0.255.255.252.0 default router 10.0.0.1 this same IP address we have just given this one okay that's the default gateway for these host DNS server 10.0.0.50 now we'll exclude some IP DHCP excluded address 10.0.0.2 until 10.0.0.10 exit so from 11 onwards they start getting these IP addresses so we'll verify that also so first one will be this one so this come like this by default it will be checked static you need to enable this DHCP here and dot 11 will come here dot 11 next will be dot 12 this is dot 12 and this will be dot 13 here dot 13 and last one will be dot 14 and dot 14 so this is how you would configure a requirement like this. So now just assume that the rest of them would get the IP addresses just from our pool. So this is it. This is class A FLSM. So in the next video, we'll see some other concept. Until then, stay tuned. Thank you and good day.